How did you come up with this logo and name? The, the, the first space we opened in was an old Oddfellows um, fraternal organization club back in the early 1900s. And we found a bunch of their stuff up there. And so we were some called the Oddfellows back then. And we're all kind of Oddfellows, so it makes sense. For me, I see a lot of people like play the outside, but like a lot of people are so terrified to like get in the pocket and like survive that battle of being in the pocket and then just like beating somebody down to pass their guard. The way I like to look at it is I don't even want to pass people's guard anymore. Like I want people to get to the point where they're like, look, just pass because I am done with the way that you're passing, if that makes sense. So instead of like trying to pass people, and then if I, if I pass Andrew really fast, what happens? He goes eight crap. He fights harder because he knows that his guard's been fast. And then I got to fight even harder and waste more energy compared to just like putting him in a place to the point where he wants me to pass. And then when I do pass, he accepts it. The first thing that I did was just like, don't fall. Don't let him knock you over. Don't let him sweep you. And that's how my headquarters pass kind of began and started to evolve was stay here and just don't fall over. Stay in the pocket knocks me over that way, if he knocks me over this way, whatever it is, then I lose. And that's where the first three to six months of my drilling started. So if you guys are doing these passing, don't be <coughs> discouraged because there's so many layers to it, okay? If I show you a femora, if I show you an arm bar, whatever the case is, there's a system behind that. Does that make sense? Like the kimura is the same, and then the systems you do behind the kimura are like, okay, you do this, I do this. With things like guard and passing, there's so there's so much to it that I can't just create one system, right? Because he can, if I go with every one of you, you're gonna do something completely different. And I have to know all the different concepts behind that. So it's really hard to teach you systems to guard passing. So when you're trying to learn to do guard passing or guard playing, don't, it, it changes so much that you, the best thing to do is to just see what different reactions your opponent gives you and then just like put it in your database. Okay. I kept this squared up and I just tried to kill this. But the problem is, is Andrew's hip flexor isn't being engaged here and the back of his leg muscles are actually gonna be what's gonna be doing all the damage to me, right? So this was like kind of bad for me, but it, it taught me a lot of balance and not falling over. This is where I started, right? But when I'm coming in now, what I want is people to actually carry my weight. And if they don't carry my weight, then I don't really essentially want to attack the guard the same way. So when I'm coming in here, whether it's like this or this, it's coming in like this. 
right? Where I'm actually putting my weight like on his leg, on the side of his leg. And my goal is to actually get his knees together. Okay, that's the only goal. So it's kind of like the leg weave essentially, right? I'm wanting this leg to come this way and I'm wanting this leg to touch this leg. So I'm essentially entering where I'm making him carry my weight and I'm trying to get his knees pinned together. See, I'm pinching his foot together. Everything's here and I want my weight here and I want to just be floating on top of him. I want to carry, I want him to carry my weight. I don't want to stabilize my own weight. I want him to stabilize it, right? And then my only focus is that I'm just constantly going this way until his knees get pinched together. Just like this. Does that make sense? Now I know that's easier said than done, but I want to put my opponent in a place where he's going to engage his muscles and I'm not. So if I'm here doing this, I'm engaging all my muscles. I'm doing all the work, right? But if I come in like this, right, now I'm not doing anything except laying on it. Now it's just hand fighting, shoulder fighting, adjusting. Does that make sense? Another one in the last two weeks that I'm doing, pushing on the head, pushing on the chin, or taking my head and pinning it here. Okay, and the reason why is when I first started playing headquarters, right, like I said, just balance at stage one, just not falling over, okay? Then it got to the point where I got so comfortable with that, I started trying to look at where I can make my opponent the weakest the whole time, okay? Engaging their hip flexors, keeping their elbows away from their sides, keeping their head flat on the mat was the big one for me in the last two weeks, okay? If you can't sit up as a guard player, do you feel weaker when your head's on the mat or if your head's sitting up towards me? When you guys are here, just thinking like this, right? Just the difference in that one you're gonna start to move. Right, so start to move your legs. How much harder does it feel to play your guard? To establish a guard too. And these are all like things that are just simple things that you have these hands to actively base, to pin the shoulders, to push the head down. Like it's killed so many people and how much this gets tired by trying to not be able to use your neck and your, your head muscle, right? Like to sit up and actually engage your core and start to lift somebody up. These are just concepts I want you guys to think about when you're doing this, okay? So we're gonna do this really simple. I'm gonna try to make this as easy as possible, okay? You're gonna be here and I want you to think about the step, okay? Big step here to shift this over, okay? And if I go over here, right, and he pushes back this, if he pushes back this way, I like. I, people have been doing this a lot to me lately, where they push me this way, and then when they do that, it's like popping this through and then I'm sitting here. Like this is gonna be the last stage though, but this has been great for me lately. Because you have two options. You're either gonna push him this way, or you're gonna try to push him that way, or you're gonna try to push him this way, okay? So, the trigger on the entry, step in, right? Then I want you guys to just make them. Don't sit back here. No pressure here, right? <clears throat> Nothing? You feel kind of comfortable, right? Here, make him carry your weight and base, base, base. Of course, don't put your hand by Andrew's head because we know that he likes straight arm bar. He's good <laughs> at that, okay? But hand pinning the shoulder, right? Actively hand fighting, pushing, staying comfortable here, okay? And then all I'm trying to do is essentially here, here, knees touching, right? I don't care where my anything is except I look at it like this. I don't want my opponent to reverse shrimp off the back door, okay? And I don't want my opponent to use his knees. I want to keep his knees pinned. Simple, just try to keep it as easy as possible, right? I don't want to pass. Of course, it looks like the pass is here, but then if I pass, he's going to turtle. If I do this, he's going to fight. Okay? I want to keep riding his hips until he absolutely wants me to pass. And in the first 10 seconds, that's not going to happen. Okay? We're here, right? Step in. We just get our body here. Hand fighting, moving. And again, I'm constantly like, he's pushing me off. I'm constantly like deflecting my shoulders, taking my belly, and pushing his legs down. Right? Just killing the legs, killing the thighs, killing the arms. Okay? And then if the pass is there, great. But what we're gonna look for is the trigger of the knee cut. He's gonna lift 
back to come to guard, right? I get to determine the speed of this. Here's where these two passes, the staple pass or the knee cut pass is gonna be great. Your stomach on this gets to determine how fast he brings this back, okay? So as he's bringing it back, I'm carrying it, I'm carrying it, right? Then I can staple the knee cut, okay? So you get to determine the speed, in, in, in which case he opens his legs and gives you that, okay? So the where I staple down is if the knee comes to the other side, okay? So I'm coming in here, making him carry my weight. He's bringing it back. Here's the staple, right? You get two passes here that are really nice, okay? I either get the knee cut or the knee pops all the way up because he's super flexible and he throws it off to the side, in which case I'm dropping down here, okay? When I club the head here, be nice to each other's necks, okay? But I want to think about reaching my hand and grabbing all the way on the far side shoulder, okay? I don't want to do this, which is what everyone does. They club the head nicely here. There's no pressure. And now this butterfly here actually can move, okay? When I club the head, I want Andrew looking at that mirror. That's why I'm saying just be super nice to each other, okay? So we're here, we're gonna step in, and then we're just gonna try to trap this and just make people carry our weight. And this is a good game that we can play today where it's like, they're just trying to get a guard back on you and you're just sitting here being heavy on them, okay? Also, don't have your feet out here like this where he's gonna grab the leg and then you're dealing with this, okay? All these details matter. My heels are under my butt, my knees are pinching, I'm actively hand fighting, okay? All these things I've ran into, like, the legs being grabbed, all that, okay? So he lifts back up, right? He lifts back up, I take the pace right there. Boom, knee cut, drop down, right? Otherwise, he lifts back up, but it slides across because I was being lazy, boom, drop down. Actively trying to pinch the heel into his butt, okay? Now, when I want to back step the pass, I can't do the back step on the pass unless he looks away. Okay? So when I club, a lot of times what happens is people kind of are starting to sit up here and I'll club, okay? My shoulder is gonna go right here across the cheek, not the neck where he can turn into me. Here, okay, see the difference here? And then all I wanna do is try to keep my chest on his chest. And then I wanna be as nice to our partner as possible if you guys have head pass. But, my shoulder is sitting right on the cheekbone. My side is sitting right on the chest, trying to flatten him out before I back step. Does that make sense? He might start to push me back up, right? Again, I want him to carry my weight, right? I don't want to just, I only want to back out when I know things are really, really bad, like he's getting a guard. But from here, he starts to push back up, right back into the whole thing, right? There's so many times that I'll put myself back in these places because you're just gonna get more tired and more tired and more tired. The worst thing to do as a guard passer is to use all your energy in the world and then when you finally pass, you're so exhausted that it takes him one strip to re-guard and then all, the, all your work's lost. Where if I do it like this, by the time I pass, you're like, I got nothing left. That's kind of the way that's had a lot of success for me passing on these like flexible, younger people that are just, they don't stop. Lay on them. You know? <laughs> I'm only giving him one option, right? Like essentially when I'm here, if he was to play the other way, I'm not saying that this is the end of the world, but I'm not as strong on this side, right? So if he's pushing back, a lot of times I'll just switch right back to this side. It just kind of is one of those things that like, I'm relentlessly, I'm not bad, I'm just going to start to smash this way and then as soon as he starts to come back, and push, I'll back out, and a nice thing that I've really enjoyed lately with my guard passing is I'll disengage or I'll pretend to disengage where they feel like they're gonna have some hope and then I'll re-engage right away. So if he goes for double butterflies, yeah. do you, you then pick which side you're gonna pass? Yeah, so anytime someone double, double butterflies, like this is my 10,000, over, right? Over, right away. Like, as soon as someone shoots a butterfly, and then I'm hand fighting. I'm not letting them. Like for me, it took me a long time 
not to let anyone establish guard on me. In the beginning, they get a Delahiva. In the beginning, they get a foot on me. In the beginning, they knock me over. But like eventually it got to the point where like, I'm constantly just deflecting and just laying on them and making sure I don't get swept and trying to kill one leg as much as I can. So it doesn't matter if they're sitting up, like Andrew was saying, just step <coughs> big foot off to the side so that you're shifting them. And if you don't, then you're just here, right? And this isn't the end of the world. You just gotta make sure that you're killing his heel and you're still hand fighting and then you're still getting down here. And then if he's pushing back, it's like, then I'm shifting it back into here. Now I'm in the same place. Now when he starts to push back, boom, right? So just chaining those three steps together and constantly cooking your opponent back and forth and having that like good balance where they're carrying you in everything that they're doing instead of just being able to be relaxed. That kind of makes sense? Right. So I just want you guys to start with like stepping into the leg weave and getting that where like they're stabilizing your weight, you're not stabilizing your weight. If you're stabilizing your weight, then you're being, then you're giving them space to get free. You're giving them space to shrimp. You're giving them space to be comfortable. And they should be like uncomfortable right off the bat. <coughs> Make sense? Any questions? I have one. Okay. So you might, even if they give you the pass, you might not necessarily want to. I, I yeah. will sometimes not even take the pass if they give it to me. Sure, you just want to continue to like wear them down until they get to the point where it's like. I want to control my opponent's hips the whole time until I feel them quit on themselves and then I'll go to side control. I don't like to go to side control anytime sooner than that because some people are really slick. Like they train off bad positions, sure. you know, and they keep their energy low and they know that maybe their guard's not good enough. So they wait for you to pass and then they try to set up all the sneaky stuff and that's nothing wrong to that. But like, I grew up in a system of like point fighting, right? Sure. Like I try to tell people, which is like the belts kind of suck. They're kind of annoying in the sense that like, okay, I'm a black belt in IBJJF point fighting, right? right. But like, I'm a blue belt in maybe leg locks, you know? Sure. Maybe I'm a, I'm a blue belt in wrestling. I'm a black belt in like being really aware of points and knowing how they work and making sure that I make good decisions. So all these areas like, you can't just look at it like what the belt is. Because you'll see a lot of blue belts tap out black belts, depending on what environment they come up in. For me, it's like, I'm constantly just evaluating that there's like five or six different belts. And in my mind, I'm trying to raise the level of those belts, right? Like I'm trying to improve my nogi game, my no nogi leg lock game, and my wrestling game, because that's what needs the most improvement. But I think sometimes people see a black belt and just say, they're good at everything. And it's like, no. And I think a black belt sometimes gets a black belt and thinks that they're unbeatable now because they have this black belt and then they get their ego hurt because some young blue belt comes in and just wrecks them. It's definitely one of those things that I think you have to evaluate your game and where you're strong at in that sense. Does that make sense? Kind of? When I knee cut and he actually gets over here and starts to block, make sense? Uh -huh. I can club the head. Just be nice to your partners. But when I club the head, I don't want to do it like this. This is like comfortable. People's neck are strong and they can like muscle through the club, okay? When I punch across and I try to grab far over here and my shoulder, right? So I'm trying to be like super nice with people's neck. So this like puts people back down flat and then I come across and then staple chest to chest. And now when I block this, it makes it almost impossible for him to even come into me whatsoever without it just completely causing him a lot of pain. That makes sense. When I club someone's head, it's like, boom, oh, right? Like they're stuck here like this, like there's no chance for them to turn back into you to wrestle up or to re-guard. But if you just club the neck, right? Like you can kind of like use your neck to like turn back into people. And I've ran into that a lot. Like some people just are bigger and stronger than necks. And if I club their neck, it doesn't shut them down. I have to shut them down by pinning them and making it where they can't turn into me. And here's the thing. Don't, don't do pass series one hoping that you're going to trigger pass series two. Okay, I think sometimes when we drill, we like something better. It's like, oh, I like the that, so I'm going to make that one work. But you really want the first pass to work 100% of the time. And then when that fails because they're having to push back so much, that's where you're seeing the opening for the next one. 
okay? So when you're in here and you're playing, come over and just get in here. And then, okay, we'll do one game where you're just trying to sit in this pocket. You can pin hands down, pin shoulders, whatever the case is, block, right? Make sense? Then, the first step is I just want his knees together. That's it. I'm here, pick, right? Then the next game could be really simple. He needs to get back to a guard, rebuild, whatever the case is. But I'm gonna try to just keep my stomach on his knees and keep him pinned, okay? Because then, over the top, I can pass this way, I can pass this way, all those things are options, right? But let's say that he's still got lots of energy, he starts to rebuild, look, even this is my favorite. See what he just did? This is my favorite right now. This is what I've been really working on. When someone takes their leg here, and we'll work on this later, now his hip flexor is 100% engaged. Not this muscle, right? So now, my favorite is blocking the armpit, and now he's gotta get that leg back, right? That, that's one of the hardest things to get back once you take that knee away from that hip flexor. Does that make sense? I'm constantly looking at this point, trying to get somebody to activate this muscle instead of this muscle. So we just sit on it. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times people will push me back here and then I'll just sit here and then when he tries to get it back, right, it's almost impossible. So let's back up. See how it's staying away from this. It's going to constantly be activated here, right? And you're constantly trying to get that back in. And when you're doing the knee cut, just 100%. Make sure that if I'm knee cutting my body to this side, my head is landing on this side, okay? If I come here, I'm balancing, he's pushing me back, okay? I'm already leaning. Don't do, don't do this, because now he's on his side, now he's over here, now there's all these things, I don't have my pressure. If my body's going this way, my head's going that way, or vice versa. My head's going this way, my body's going this way. Just to constantly cross bodies and flatten them out. Okay, I'm here, he's pushing back, he's pushing back, he's keeping my chest, right? Oh, and my hand, here, right? Dropping down, to the chest, under the knee, closing the hand. Make sense? I don't care if he quarter guards his foot. Like, he can hold on to that foot for all day, it won't matter, okay? If it's here, you're in great place, okay? Just keep the knee in the armpit, don't let it go away from his side. Okay, and then just walk your, walk your fingers in an X. Here, right? Now it's gonna be really impossible for him to actually stop this. Some people get stuck in that like quarter guard position, they freak out, like they can't get out of it, but like you're in a really good place. So just stay your weight distributed correctly and, and then just take your time there, because for me, that's just like him holding on for dear life, it's not him doing anything. Any questions? Alright, let's start with that. I'm sorry. Good luck. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Staple the face, right? Get the weight off to your right more. Yep. Okay, now try to lift. How's that feel? Okay, now back step over. Okay. How's it feel? Better? More? See, this is what you guys need to communicate with. Does that make sense? You guys have to put yourself in these places and test. If you knock them over, it's not that that's bad or good or whatever, because you're going to make mistakes. You're going to displace your weight wrong. He's going to have flexibility or different strength or different things. And you guys just have to talk with each other and actually have like realistic understanding of what is and not going to work. When you're in here, you're coming here, right? And then you're just wanting to hit the staple pass. Make sense? So I'm here chest to chest. Okay. Now, when I'm ready, I'm gonna shift my hips and punch here, right? Yep. Is it different or the same? Different. Okay, so lift. Right? The thing I notice is the foot. You notice that? Yeah. I, and that's one thing I forget about, like these little small details, but I was killing this leg and you didn't, you felt it though, right? Yeah, but I forget like to, yeah, leg. those things matter. Like you, here's the problem. Like I'm trying to show you guys seven years in 30 minutes, right? And I can't point out all those details. So like the best thing for you to do is like, just get good 
at the basics, like not falling over, learning for them to carry your weight. Pinning a shoulder down, sometimes too, is I'll drop an elbow here, right? So like if I am going for the underhook and they're here, right? Here gives me like a false underhook. Okay, so then it's just like I'm driving my weight down and then it's there. And now no matter what, at least they're not getting the underhook on me and digging themselves back up. Because it does suck when somebody gets this, you know, like he's starting to chase my back and then he's going to be able to sweep me and do all that stuff or, or regard. For me, like just even having a false underhook of putting my elbow in there and hitting the ground helps flatten him back out so that he can't keep digging under and trying to come out the back. All right, on two, one, two. Can't believe you made him put a D on. I didn't. Put it all on you. Oh, huh? Put it all on you. <laughs> Just got to keep getting better and better. You got to, you got to make sure that you enjoy the sport. You know, you got to do it to the point where it's fun, because otherwise you'll hate it. And at the end of it, doesn't matter how much competitions you win, doesn't matter how much you accomplish. Like if you don't enjoy learning and doing all this shit and figuring things out like a game of chess, then you'll get tired. I appreciate you guys supporting, supporting the team, supporting everything that we're doing. Just the biggest thing I just want to say as after 14 years of grappling is make sure that you guys enjoy the sport. You know, like don't show up wanting to be the best in the room all the time or wanting to like be the greatest competitor. Like enjoy the sport and enjoy the people that you're sharing it with. Because like I remember a time when I had two people in my living room, you know, and it was like I, I would have killed to have this number of people on the mats that I could have just checked different things, you know, different body types, different athletic abilities, different age groups. Like 
just having the ability to sit here and have multiple people on the mat that I can work with and share knowledge with and bounce back and forth with, like that's so crucial. And for me, like sometimes you just don't realize how right now this moment is gonna be completely different in 10 years. You know, the belts are gonna be different, the people are gonna be different, but like if you're showing up just wanting to be a world champion, you're just showing up wanting to be the toughest in the room, that's, that's okay, but like, enjoy the game, enjoy the art, like seriously love it and look for different things in your game that you can improve, okay? Like explore the game, have fun, think about it like it's the greatest video game of human chess in the world, you know, and, and, and be happy to show up. Otherwise, you're just gonna get burnt out and you're gonna hate the same motions and, and then you're gonna not be motivated at like consistency and just growing every day, okay? So I appreciate you guys putting all the work in. All right, let's do double A first. Is this your gi? I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you so much. These stripes are a little bit different. Ugh. We'll hide that in there. Don't tell anyone. Thank, Thank you, you for all you do. Thank you. So. And then we've got Andrew. These stripes are different. I know, that's how I like it. No, I mean, they're different. Wits. Yeah. That doesn't mess with your OCD? No. <laughs> I, want, I want it to look janky as possible. All right, well, congratulations. Thank you, Thank you guys. So, but seriously, I don't know how else to say it. Like. 14 years and at the end of it, I'm showing up now with like more passion and more enjoyment on the mats than I did before, just for the simple sense, like I'm having fun with my students, I'm having fun with the people around me. You know, like we can make things too serious in life. And like, this is your getaway from life. Like this is your place where you're supposed to come in and get away from the stress and the drama of your family or your work or whatever it is, and just connect with other human beings and like be able to figure stuff out and have fun. Okay, so if you do it in that way, like, I think you can make it for a long time in the sport. If you do it any other way, I can just tell you at the end of it, you might be more frustrated with yourself because this, uh, after 14 years, I'm still learning something every week. Every, every week I'm learning some different grip, some different technique, some different concept. It never ends. Don't expect it to end. Just keep building each other, okay? Let's put all the hands in the middle and then we can do Risen on three. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys for being here. On three, we'll do Risen, all right? One, two, three, Risen! Risen!